Hi, this is Paolo and welcome to the fifth installment of the Blender Survival Guide. In part four, we learn how to create a 3D text and how to assign a custom font to it. I know what you're thinking. We went through all this and this is still a, a still image. You know, we use After Effects for motion graphics. The word motion graphics implies motion. So how can we have a little bit of animation. Here it is. Let's see how we can animate. I'm gonna just do something simple. Keep it simple. That's my model. Something very simple. We're gonna just rotate the text from here, from this to this. Okay, so go from here to here. And do it in about, I don't know, a couple of seconds or so. All right, press ESC. How we do that? Now, first of all, check that our uh, frame number is at one. Second, uh, I'm gonna apply the uh, transformation, the rotation from the top view so that we are using basically the Z axis. I can do it from here. If I want to do the transformation directly from this view, I'll press R for rotation. If I do R, it will rotate in this direction. If I press Z, it will link the rotation to the Z axis. At this point, I can move it directly here. Either way, okay, R, Z. And one thing I see immediately is that when the text arrives at this point, the text is off the frame. So. Uh, let's press ESC and uh, let's click on our camera and uh, move the camera a little bit to the side. All right. Now, if I right click on the text and I do this again, uh, still not the right way. Okay. Let's click on the camera again and uh, we are still on frame number one. I move it back just a tiny bit, okay? So now we right click on the on the object, R for rotation, okay, and the rotation happens in the frame. Okay. So how it's done? Simple. We are uh, on frame number one. You are familiar with the concept of keyframes because you use After Effects, well, Blender uses keyframes as well. So no mystery there, no problem there. Uh, the only uh, thing we need to know is how those keyframes are actually created. All right, simple enough. Right now, right now, we are looking at our timeline here, and the timeline has uh, our start frame, our end frame, our frame position, playback controls and all that kind of stuff. Here, there are some keyframe buttons. We're gonna ignore them for a while, okay? So don't be distracted. Keep your attention on the object. Starting from a, a frame one, I want to create a keyframe for the position and the rotation of this object, the text. The way I do it, is by selecting the object and pressing the key I for insert key. If you don't remember it, if you look at the object menu, insert keyframe is here as well. And you can see the shortcut, the I key. Okay. Under Blender, you have basically the option to create keyframes for specific parameters. The location or lock, which is the equivalent of After Effects positions parameter, the rotation, and the scale. You can manipulate these parameters, the keyframes for these parameters independently, or you can use some combos, like in this case, the lock rot, which is the location and rotation. And that's what we want to do. So we click on this. It seems like nothing happened, but if you move your cursor here from the timeline, 
you can use the mouse or you can use the keys the arrow keys like left and right like I'm using now and you see that there is a, a yellow bar here now if I move my mouse my current timeline indicator here now you can see from the viewport that the name of the object actually is in yellow because we snap to that frame and that frame has a keyframe and so Blender let us know that we are right there. So if we need to change the keyframe, we are in the right spot. All right, let's see. I'm going to try to move this a few seconds ahead. Let's try about 96, calculating at 24 frames per second. And uh, I'm going to rotate it. I have the mouse here in the top view. Keep things simple. I'll press the R key, rotate it a little bit like this. It's a nice 3D profile. And then I press I again, and I select again, lock rot. And now if I scrub, I have my animation. <laughs> Look at this. So you know what? I'm going to move my mouse here in the camera point of view, and I'm going to press A. The key A selects everything or all. It means basically selects all. And if you already have something selected, it will deselect all. So if you press A again, as you see, it selects everything here. And then you press A again, it deselects everything. So if you have something selected and you want to deselect it, just press A again. Very quick way of deselecting your objects and cleaning up the, the scene. So if I press Alt A now, I'm going to play back my animation. And here it is. And as nice as it is, I like to see it in a more dramatic way. Here is another quick shortcut for you, a quick tip. With the mouse inside a view, inside the window, press Shift Spacebar to go full screen. Shift Spacebar. And now you press Alt A. Now this is a completely different way of playing back your animation. A lot better. See here our cursor is turning to the frame number. And basically Blender goes up to frame 96 and then keeps counting up to frame 250. We can change that. Press ESC, shift spacebar again to go back to the normal view. Go to your scene settings. Change the end of the animation from 250, let's say, to 110. Just to keep a little bit of frames uh, on the pause at the end. And now we can play back up to 96, back to the beginning. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now we have our text. We have it in 3D. We have a rotating. We have ambient occlusion. We just need to render it and bring it inside After Effects. Let's see how that is done. We are already in the scene parameters, in the scene button. Uh, we are going to go to the output tab. And uh, as you see, I already saved this under a path. It's survival guide, end of lesson three dot blend. That was um, how I saved the file. Now, um, let me just save it with another name. File, save as. And uh, I'm going to call it Lesson 4. Okay. Dot blend. Confirm. Now it's saved. For the output path, this is where I want to export. I want to create the files that are part of the render. I'm going to click on the folder icon. And uh, here I have something that is in a, in a completely different directory, slash temp. It can be anything. 
depends on your defaults at the moment of whatever you used last. Here's a quick shortcut. If you already saved your file, as you should, in the name of the path, you type slash slash, forward slash for you Windows users, slash slash, and then you press enter. The slash slash, basically it's a shortcut that says go in the same directory of this blend file. Okay, so now we have our uh, directory pointer right there where we need it. And um, you know what? Survival guide is okay, but I want to create a render directory to store all my render files. So at the end of the path, I type render, for example, and I press enter. And Blender will ask me, um, do you want to make this directory? Because, you know, I cannot find it. And I just click on the option make there, and it will create a directory for me automatically. Easy when you know it. <laughs> well, here in the file name, I can uh, enter the name that I want to use for my render. And the file name that I want to use in this case is something simple as uh, uh, lesson four 3D text underscore pound 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 dot png the pound 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 i remind you is the um, placeholder for the frame number that will be replaced with 001 002 003 etc if you need more if you think that your animation will go in the uh, thousands of frames then of course use four it's up to you so we confirm our option, our choice. Here is the path. Now we click on Anim, which is basically the animation option for the rendering. And we want everything at 100%. Click on this animation button. And Blender will generate one frame at a time you can see the frame number here, frame 4, 5, 6. We can see that it takes about 2 seconds and 83 hundreds to generate every single frame. So it's almost 3 seconds, a little less. I'll fast forward to the end of this render and show you the result. And we are done. Now you can see actually how the text has a different shading because it moved while we kept the lights stationary. So in fact, now we have a completely different highlights, completely different uh, projection of shadows here. This is an option. There are all different kind of options for these animations, but for now we keep it simple. Okay, so let's close the window. And let's call After Effects. Okay. So let's import our render footage. And uh, here we click on the first ping file. We are making sure that PNG sequence is selected and press Open. Our footage is imported. Drop it to a comp. There you go. Here it is, our After Effects text in 3D. We can just add a new solid, bring it down, go to Effects, Generate, Ramp, and uh, I don't know, change a little bit of this color here, maybe actually the end color to another orange. And uh, do a quick rendering. There you go. 
As you see, the alpha channel is preserved. Now you're seeing this scaled down, so there is some uh, aliasing that is showing up, but um, if you render this a highest quality, it will be perfectly fine. And uh, this is all that it takes to create new text that you can include in After Effects. So I hope this lesson was useful. Uh, it's a lot of material again. These are becoming pretty dense, but we are not done yet. So I'll see you on the next video. Don't miss it. See you next time. Thank you.